Welcome to Winning with Wisdom, the anointed teaching ministry of Dr. Nasser. Curable disease and the, the power of God, the powerful ministry of Dr. Nasser Siddiqui is equipping God's people with wisdom principles to be successful in every area of life, marriage, family, business, and more. Touching the world, touching lives, touching you. This is Winning with Wisdom with Siddiqui. This is Dr. Nasser Siddiqui, Winning with Wisdom, and here I am in Nazareth. Yes, we are in the Holy Land. This is the town that Jesus was brought up in. I tell you, God is just bringing the Word alive on this trip. Every time I open my Bible, it's just phenomenal what the Holy Spirit is showing me. You know, Jesus is alive and well. The tomb is empty. Even when they didn't accept Him here in His hometown, He was able to slip away. God will protect you everywhere you go, as long as you go after the Word. Talking about the Word, we have a great teaching lined up for you. In a few minutes, we're going to go over to the Wisdom Center, where I'll be teaching you the Word of God. In the meantime, please check to see if I am speaking somewhere in your area. I would love to see our partners and friends. They will list that afterwards. Come join me, or even in Tulsa, Oklahoma, at the Wisdom Conference, or who knows, maybe right here in Israel. Right now, let's go over to the Wisdom Center for the teaching that God has prepared for us today, and then I will be right back to pray for you. And now, today's vital teaching from Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is a new beginning for me. Turn to your other neighbor and say, everything is about to change in my life. How do you know that? Because I'm looking at the Word. I'm not looking at my circumstance. I'm not looking at what people say. I'm not looking at my job. I'm not looking at my business or my ministry or my church or my career. I'm looking at the Word. Amen? Amen? Can't lean on your own understanding no more. No, we're going to the Word. Everybody say, stay with the Word. Uh -huh. God is our source. He is our supply. Well, while you're over there, uh, check over in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Proverbs 4, verse, Proverbs 4, verse 20. My son, attend to what? My words. The word. I'm going back to the word. Attend to, you say, Brother Nasa, I know all that. But sometimes we need a refresher course to get us back on track. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. We all of us deviate off the word after a while. Come back to the word. Say, this is basic stuff. But until we live the basic stuff, we ain't going to see anything else. Amen. We got to get this part right. We're going back to the word. Uh huh. Uh, 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 my son, attend to my words. Consent to them. Submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your what? Sight. Whoa, whoa. Stop right there. Don't let my words. Everybody shout the word of God. The word of God. Depart from your what? Sight. So wait a minute. Hmm. All right, everybody follow me. Everybody look at me. Can you see me? All right, are you looking at me? All right, now everybody look at the camera. Look at the camera back there. Everybody look at the camera. Now, are you looking at the camera? Shout yes if you're looking at the camera. Can you see me? Look back at me. See, see, when you look at your circumstance, you stop seeing the Word. So you're going to have to make a decision tonight. Am I going to look at my circumstance? Because you can't see both. You couldn't see me in the camera. You're either going to see the camera or you're going to see me. But you can't see both. So if you're going to keep looking at your situation, if you're going to keep looking at your circumstance, if you're going to keep looking at your job, if you're going to keep looking at your business or your ministry or your church as your source, you stop looking at the Word. Because mm. you can't see both. It says to keep one in front of your eyes. <laughs> I got the Word in front of me, Brother Nasser, but let me tell you about my situation. Oh, you don't have your Word in front of you. I know you don't. The moment you open your mouth, I could tell what you were looking at. Is it okay to take God literally? 
Is that all right? Keep the word in your sight. I'm looking at the word. Not what the situation says. Not what the trial and the tribulation I'm going through says. No, I'm going to stay with the word. I got to keep it in front of my eyes. So every time somebody talks to me by the words coming out of their mouth, I know what they're looking at. Oh, it's getting quiet in this Presbyterian church. Hello. <laughs> See, because by your words, I can tell what you're looking at. Amen. Because if you're looking at the word, I know what your words are going to be. They're going to line up with the word. But if your words don't line up with what's in this book, I, you ain't looking at the word. But the Bible says, don't let the word depart from your sight. Amen? So we got to keep this thing in front of us all the time. I can't walk around with the Bible in front of me all the time. No, you can't. But you can listen to it in the car as you're driving. Amen. You can listen to it all night while you're sleeping. Amen. Instead of watching the TV shows that you love to watch, how about listening to the... Oh, come on now. How about, <laughs> how about putting in a CD or a DVD and getting some word in front of you? How about reading the Bible? Has it come to that? Come on now. <laughs> Amen. You want me to read the word? <laughs> How else are you going to see the blessings of God come upon you? Amen. Everybody shall do it right. All right. It says, for they are life. What is life? The word. Life to those who find them. They are health and healing to their flesh. The word itself will heal you if you won't. Take it away from your sight. Wow. No, I didn't say this. The Bible said it. It says, uh, 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 keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard it. For out of it flow the springs or the issues of life. We're going to come to that. and uh, Put away from you false dishonest speech and willful contrary talk. Put far from you. Let your eyes look right on and let your gaze be straight before you. Consider well the path of your feet. Let all your ways be established and ordered aright. My brothers and sisters, we cannot take our eyes off the word. You say, but brother Nassau, if I keep thinking on the word, focusing on the word, looking at the word, speaking the word, living the word, and I still die, what a way to go. If the Word couldn't save you, I don't know nothing more powerful than the Word of God. Right. Amen. But by the way, I got good news. I read the back of the book. We live, we win. We die, we win. Amen. We're with Jesus. Amen. Amen. So stay with the Word. Everybody say, stay with the Word. Stay with the Word. Stay with the word. Look at the Word. God is your Jehovah Jireh, your provider. By the way, how many of you want God to be Jehovah Jireh, your provider this year? All right, just off the record, you can study this yourself. I've taught this many times. He doesn't give harvest, he gives seed. That's why it was called Jehovah Jireh, my seed provider. Because it's the seed that brings you harvest, amen? And when Abraham called that place Jehovah Jireh, it was not because God provided him a harvest, it's because God provided him a seed. He gave him the ram, amen? So he is your provider, and that's what it says in this prophecy, that God is our provider. He is going to supply, amen? Jesus is our source. The blessing of Abraham is our supply. Praise God, uh, the word is our supply. Now walk in that, you're going to have to pay attention. You're going to have to listen on purpose. Take time to pray and listen to God. Now, we're going to get into some heavy stuff. Jesus said, I only say those things that I hear my Father say. Mm. All right. Come with me, if you would to John chapter 8. Where did this come from? John chapter 8. You know what? Before we go to John chapter 8, can I do a little pit stop here? Come with me to Mark 4.23. Mark 4.23. I think I need to do this. I wasn't planning on doing this. I thought I'd skip it, but the Holy Spirit said, no, I want you to do it. So we're going to do it. Is it okay to follow the Holy Ghost? Amen. All right. Let's, we'll come back to John 8 in just a minute. Let's go to Mark chapter 4, 
verse 23. Are you there? Say amen. Now, who's got a King James Bible? Anybody got a King James Bible in the front row here? Who's got a King James Bible? Uh, you got one? Uh, Reverend Theo's got one, so we're going to find out. Uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 23. Here we go. For he that hath... No, no, no. If any man have ears to hear... Uh-huh. What else does it say? Now, now, everybody look up here. If any man... Now, that means man or woman has ears. Now, how many of you in the room have ears? If you have ears, lift up your hand nice and high. I want to make sure, all right, everybody's got ears. All right. Now, now it says here, if any man has ears to hear. Now, how many of you eat with your ears? How many of you actually use your ears to hear? Amen. Huh. Why would Jesus say, if any man has ears? Isn't it obvious? Turn to your neighbor and say, we all got ears. And then it says, if any man has ears, let him hear. What else are you supposed to do with your ears? Hello? You can't smell with them. You can't eat with them. You can't move stuff with them. You can only hear with them. So why would he say that? Then it says, if any man has ears to hear, let him hear. Hmm. Sounds redundant. Have you ever tried to do anything else with your ears? No. So the only thing you can do with your ears is hear. So why would it say that? Here is the answer. Now let me read you the Amplified Version. Mm. If any, <laughs> any man has ears to hear, how many of you have ears to hear? Wave to me if you have ears to hear. Let him be listening. Wow. There's a big difference between hearing and listening. See, see, you can hear a fire engine going down the street. But that don't mean you're listening to it. You can hear background music of traffic going on that street. But that doesn't mean you're listening to it. So he doesn't say, if you've got ears to hear, just hear. No, no. He says, if you've got ears to hear, be listening. Be paying attention. Don't let distractions drive you away. If you're going to come and get your life changed tonight and tomorrow morning and tomorrow night, don't be moved by hearing other things. Be focused on what you're listening. Listen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm going to get everything tonight. And that only comes from listening, from paying attention, saying, come on, Lord, feed me, feed me, feed me the word. I want my life changed. Amen? Amen. So now you understand, we got to listen. Don't just come to services to hear. Man, we got a ton of people, Christians going to, am I right, Pastor? We got a ton of Christians going to churches to, to hear, but their life ain't changing because they're only hearing. They didn't come to listen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I came to listen. All right, now come with me to John chapter 8. All right, because that's what he said here. He said, listen on purpose. We got to make a decision. This year, we're going after the Word, and we're going to listen on purpose. We're going after it with everything we got. All right. Now, we see uh, in the next verse, uh, are you at John chapter 8? Now, he said these words. I'm, I'm reading the, the prophecy. Jesus said, I only say those things I hear my Father say. I only do those things I see my father do. Now, that should be all of us the same way. Now, look at John 8, verse 26. I have much to say about you and to judge and to condemn. But he who has sent me is true, reliable. And I tell the world only the things that I have heard from him. Huh. Verse 27, they did not perceive, no, understand, what he was, that he was speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus added, he's trying to explain it now, verse 28, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, the Amplified Bible says, on the cross, you will realize, no, understand, that I am he for whom you look and that I do nothing of myself, of my own accord, or on my own authority, but I say, underline the word say now, 
exactly what my father has taught me. I say what my father says. <laughs> wow. Verse 29. And he who sent me is ever with me. My father has not left me alone. For I always do what pleases him. Do you know what? How many of you want to please God? Wave to me if you want to please God. Amen. Do you know how to please God? It's not that difficult. You say what he says. And you do what you see him do. Are you seeing this? Yeah. All of a sudden now, pleasing God isn't that difficult. But you don't do your own thing. And this is where the church has missed it. We're still doing our thing. And waiting on God to bless it. It can't happen this year. This year things are going to be different. Everybody say different. Because he says here. Huh, verse 28. But I say exactly. I love the Amplified Bible. What my father has taught me. I say what he says. And that's what this thing said. Now keep reading. We were at verse uh, uh, 30. As he said these things, many believed him, trusted, relied, and adhered to him. Verse 31. So Jesus said to those Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, hold fast my teachings, and live in accordance with them, you are truly my disciples. Now, now everybody look up here. If, Jesus said to the disciples, if you abide in my word. Am I right? You're my disciples. How many of you want to be the disciples of Jesus? Then you have to abide in his word. But wait a minute. He only says what he hears the Father say. So you have to abide in the Father's word. Because if you abide in the Father's word, then you are disciples. Would you agree with that statement? Now, now watch this. It gets better. Read the next verse. Hmm. Verse 31. So Jesus uh, said to those Jews, uh-huh. If you abide in my word, hold fast my teachings, and live in accordance with them, you are truly my disciples. And, everybody say, there's more coming. Not only are you a disciple now, because you say what the Father says, which is what Jesus says. But look at what verse 32 says. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. This is our year of freedom. Freedom from sickness, freedom from poverty, freedom from depression, freedom from trials, freedom from tribulations, freedom from famine, freedom from recession. We're going to get freedom from everything if we are his disciples. If we say what he says. If we say what the Father says. Amen. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Everybody jumps to the last verse. I'm set free indeed. But you didn't read the, the previous verses. So you never understood what the truth was. The truth is speaking what the Father said. Are you seeing this now? All of a sudden now, this verse now comes alive because we understand what brought it to this point. Amen? So what does the prophecy say? Mm, I only say, I only, everybody say only. <laughs> the Lord stopped me on this word. Won't let me go forward. Only. What does the word only mean? Huh? Everybody shout, nothing else. That's what the word only means. You can't say the word half the time and what the world says the other half of the time. Because that's not only. You can't talk about the blessings of God on Sunday and Monday and how depressed you are Tuesday and Wednesday. You can't talk about how God's going to take care of you uh, 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 Saturday, Sunday, and Monday and talk about all the trials and the tribulations you're going through Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. What does only mean? Now, how many of you have known me 
uh, or have seen me on television? How many of you have seen me on television or, or have seen, come to the meetings? All right. How many of you have known me for more than one year? Lift up your hand nice and high. How many of you have known me for more than five years? Lift up your hand nice and high. How many of you have known me for more than ten years? Lift up your hand nice and high. All of you that have known me for ten years, tell me how many times have I talked about every problem, trial, situation, and sickness that I've encountered in my life? Not once. Hello? Oh, but you're perfect, Brother Nasser, because you, you live the Word, and God's got His hand on your life. You're one of His favorite chosen ones. True? True? <laughs> no, not true. God is no respecter of persons. But I will not say what I don't hear my father say. If I was to list, how many of you are taking notes? Wave to me if you're taking notes. If I was to list to you right now every trial, every problem, every situation that I've had to face just in the last 12 months, Forget about 15 years, 10 years, just in the last 12 months, you ain't got enough paper to write it. <laughs> Brother Nasa, don't be silly. Nothing bad ever happens to you. Let me tell you something. If the devil go and attack, is he going to attack someone doing something for God or someone waiting around? <laughs> Hello? We, am I telling the truth, Pastor? We in the ministry are attacked more than anybody else because we're trying to change people's lives with the Word of God. So we get attacked in our health, we get attacked in our family, we get attacked in our ministries, we get attacked in our churches, we get attacked by people, we get attacked in our finances, we get attacked everywhere. I mean, you don't have enough paper to write down all the stuff that I've had to go through. In the last 12 months, forget about 10 years. But you don't hear me talk about it because the truth is setting me free. I only say what I hear my father say. Are you getting a hold of this? My friends, this is a voice-activated world. This is the, why I'm teaching on the voice-activated system. God literally put the voice-activated system in place, and everything he created was voice-activated. That's how the universe showed up. That's how the earth was formed, the sun was formed. Well, if God created and changed his world through voice activation, we do exactly the same thing. You can change your world if you learn how the laws of voice activation work. Change your health, change your finances, it is all here in my new series, Laws of Confession. Uh-huh. What are the laws of confession? What is it that activates the voice-activated system in our lives? In this series, uh, you're going to learn how to speak the Word when the Word speaks to you. You're going to learn that your ears and your mouth are faith gates. You're going to learn how to take the faith test. How do you really know if you are in faith? And you're going to learn how to be immovable. When you become immovable, that that's when mountains start to move. Invest in yourself and learn how to become a, a voice-activated system to change your world. Call the toll-free number, write to me, or you can order online. Here's my announcer to tell you more. Believe and speak. Believe and speak. This is the number one way you release your faith, is through your word. In his life-transforming new six-CD series, The Laws of Confession, Dr. Nasser Siddiqui will teach you how the law of confirming words and commanding words will help you to release limitless faith. Faith does not work if it's not released. Release. Till you open your mouth, your faith isn't producing nothing. The Laws of Confession, Dr. Nasser Siddiqui's powerful new life-changing teaching concerning your confession is available for you today on six CDs for your ministry gift of $30 or more. Too long, we are believing for great things and speaking bad things. Your world is framed by your words. What's coming out of your mouth? Click on wisdomministries.org to request this vital teaching. 
My friends, the laws of confession talk about the voice-activated system that God has put into place. The same system that created His world is going to create your world. It is a law. In other words, the words that you speak literally change your law. Life and death is not in the power of God. It's not in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not even in the power of the devil. It is in your tongue. But how do I control those words? What words do I speak to change my world? Learn all about that from this series, The Laws of Confession. I want to put this series into your hand. It's a valuable series that changed my life and it'll change your life. You can order it online or uh, you can write to us. Go to our website, wisdomministries.org. I encourage you, get this precious teaching to change your life. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about the voice activated system as it is connected to faith. You mean faith and words are connected? Oh, absolutely. James 2.17 says, uh -huh, faith without works is dead. Mm. So faith without works doesn't work. You've got to have works to it. What does it mean, works? Aragon corresponding actions and deeds of obedience. Every time somebody's believing for a car and you say, thank you, Lord, for my car, thank you, Lord, for my car, if there isn't the action or the right seed, oh, don't miss this, don't miss this, there is no car. That's why faith has to have words and actions to back it up. When you believe God for a house, you have to plant a seed for that house. My brothers and sisters, it is so important that you get a hold of this. Has this ministry been a blessing to you? Well, the Bible says in Galatians 6, 6, if you've been fed the word, it's right to give. Now I'm going to ask you to pray. I'm going to pray with you. What is the seed you need for what, uh, what is missing in your life? Yes, you can speak those words, but the corresponding seed now gives works to your faith words and seed cause your manifestation. And I'm going to pray and ask you to be led by the Spirit. So this ministry is reaching Muslims all over the world. Your seed will bring your harvest. Now, I said I'm going to pray with you, and I am. I thank you, Lord. I come into agreement with every person watching right now that their seed, as they sow, is the works to their faith. And as they release their words, I thank you, Lord, that their corresponding harvest is going to come into their lives. I release my faith with theirs for the third the 60, the 100 fold return in their lives on this seed. And I thank you, Lord, that their corresponding words and seed now match their faith and that harvest is come in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 and amen. Now, remember, as you experience God's hand of blessing in your life, please share these praise reports with me so that we can rejoice with you or tell us your prayer needs so that we can attach our faith with yours. I also want to invite you to join me as I travel around the nation or join me right here in Tulsa for a wisdom conference full of God's insights and wisdom. Uh, and remember, you can watch all these conferences in its entirety on our website, wisdomministries.org. Thank you now for joining joining me today. This is Dr. Nasser Siddiqui saying, I will see you next time winning with wisdom. And don't forget, tell a friend. <laughs>